Nation is the first kid to ever see him born six pack. This is my associate, Timinator. Hi, I'm Alexander Timmins. I'm the stern one. Short recap of last season. It came down to the Staff Snipers and the Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret doesn't have the help of the Rocket Ben Duffy Rocket. How'd you know they don't? Tell me to do that, man! <laughs> Our game has been changed right now, all right? Now, let's introduce some teams. Take her away, Timbit. Let's take a good look at the teams. The Chiefs, the big, bad, great 12 team everyone loves to hate. Formed in a merger between the Talladega Knights and the Average Bros. They're heavily favored going into the season. It could be the biggest dynasty since Victoria's Secret. They are very cocky and think they have no competition. I'm here with the big chief himself, Alex Blue. <laughs> Sorry. Pretty much being the team to beat, and I hear the Jets are coming for you. Who's the Jets? Their overconfidence might be their biggest downfall, just like the Talladega Knights and dodgeball last season. I see them on the court, lightning trying to keep up with them. There's lightning trying to keep up. Dylan gets it. He's got two big red oak trees underneath each arm. Uh, he can walk on his hands. Couldn't tell the difference. Got hit in the head. Sound like hollow. Didn't hear anything. Next team. Next team is the is the uh, Great Eleven response to the Chiefs, formed a merger between the Dodgeball champions, Loose Cannons, and Notorious Swag. They are to compete with the Chiefs, and I think because they are younger and they're coming as a slight underdog to the Chiefs, they might take out the Chiefs because of their overconfidence. Besides the pressure of being Rob McMillan's brother, uh, do you think you can establish your own sort of uh, legend here in Colonel Gray? Well, I mean... I live with the legacy to bring home first place, and that's what I plan to do out here this spring. They got a solid team here, I'm not going to lie, but they got some weird end pack. What kind of nickname's end pack? Tim Bader here has got a six pack, so there's one up right there, all right? <laughs> they're coming in with some endurance, they come in with passion, and they're going to come in wanting to take out the Chiefs and be the number one team of Colonel Gray. I think they might just take it. I'll throw Adam over with the Staff Snipers. Staff Snipers are a solid team here this year. This is the first year they actually made cuts to the team. They picked up some players from the Garden Home, too, so that's even better. And Last year they made it to the finals. This year they don't have any rocket players holding them back. They're going to have a place to park their walkers this year too, which is even better. So Their star player, John Louis, he's been doing 6 a.m. practices for the last six months. <laughs> By 6 a.m. practices, do you mean stuffing burgers away into his gullet before class? Yeah, I'm sure the staff is going to take it. <laughs> now, let's roll over to the Jets. They're a powerhouse tenor team. And by tenors, they're short little guys because I don't think they have puberty yet. If the coach, general manager, trainer, backup goaltender, and a gritty forward player, what was your name again? Alex Dunn. Um, well, I think we need to uh, help, help out each other and uh, support each other because uh, we're a team of small grade 10, so uh, we're going we're gonna to need to support each other because it's going to be really rough. But I think their uh, big strength is going to be their goaltender, Zach Gildert, or whatever you call him. I think the Jets are going to be on the stronger team. Ow. Guys. They do have some fresh legs on the court, and I've heard they've been in some pretty late practices, but bedtime is at 8, so, you know, they had to be home. Let's Mom might mess up their lunch, right? I'm going to toss you over to the new Mighty Pucks. Returning franchise, the Mighty Pucks, they seem to be a solid team this year, and they beefed up their line. They won over Brad from the leftovers, Mini Mustard or Relish, as he'd like to be called. What, no ketchup? And they have Meat Duck on their team, too. Nickname like that, I heard he likes meat and he loves birds. Fred and Black here in Nets, I don't know if he's wearing a mask, because he's taken a lot of balls to the face before. <laughs> Shots to the face before. <laughs> I don't know what you Next coming up, we have the Leftovers. Uh, what's the history behind the name Leftovers? It seems like a rather odd name to pick for a team. Uh, we were the scraps. Um, so we're all the bad kids on one team. But somehow we're good. So you're like, so you're like Leftovers, eh? They have a beef between the Mighty Pucks over Mini Mustard because they were fighting over them. And they also took Isaac Petrie from the Mighty Pucks. Mm, this sounds like there's going to be a lot of competition with these two teams. I really hope we see them in the playoffs because this might get very interesting, very heated. And I think those leftovers might end up in the microwave if they aren't careful. Oh. Arcee's gang. I don't have any jokes for that. That name's a joke in itself, I guess. So, what do you got for it? Yeah, they're mostly leftover notorious swag players. And to be quite frank, they don't seem all that interesting. It seems like they might just get popped off before the playoffs even start. It's very possible. Like the Canadians. Stallions and goons. Stallion. How's your sister doing? <laughs> All right, the stallions slash the goons, the great ten teams that are loosely descended from the moving targets. 
moving targets. I don't really remember them from uh, the ball, uh, the dodgeball season. I don't think they made it very far. No, they don't have a very solid team. There's a lot of argument in between them, you know. So, do you have any comment on being pretty much the underdogs of this season? I think Frank can answer your question there. <laughs> Frank? Uh, Twill knows the answer. That's a little disappointing because of the name the Stallions. You'd expect some speedy legs out there, but it looks like we might be seeing some ponies rather than Stallions. Colonel Greg Kings, former Trolls. Now they left underneath the bridge and they're going for a championship. Well, I think the national anthem will be tra la 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 tra la 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 Keep it going. Cluster Pucks and the Cotton Ball Kings are two rival teams that descended from the wrestling team. They have a star player of Harrison Ross and Cotton Ball Kings, or Harry Bird as he's known, to the ladies. Yeah, it looks like there might be some friction between these two teams. Some of the drama between the Cotton Ball Kings and the Cluster Pucks Mountain. Have any comment to say on that? Just that they better watch out. It's going to be a hard game and going to be get rough out there. A couple players kind of went from one team to the other. Basically kind of got traded. Uh, we didn't really have quite loyal with uh, the Cluster Pucks. And, uh, and they'll be definitely rubbing elbows out there on the court. I expect uh, quite an interesting rivalry between these two teams, seeing it develop throughout the uh, the season. And the final team is the Polly Pucklets. Pockets. Pockets. <laughs> yeah. Polly Pockets, the returning franchise from last year. They are the grade 11 girls. Their star player is Kelsey Duffy, and she's more of a joke than anything I could ever make. With the Easter weekend approaching, ball hockey's definitely soon to follow. We've got the season opener of the Goons and the Chiefs coming up. Speaking of rocket, how's your mother doing? My mother's doing fine. How's your dad? With the help of my assistant Cody Cody here. <laughs> I don't know about you, but he looked like a rock during dodgeball. He just got hit all over the place. We have to do a blooper reel once this is all done.